The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. When Jesus had crossed again in the boat to the other side, a large crowd gathered around him, and he stayed close to the sea. One of the synagogue officials named Jairus came forward. Seeing him, he fell at his feet and pleaded earnestly with him, saying, My daughter is at the point of death. Please, come lay your hands on her that she may get well and live. He went off with him, and a large crowd followed him and pressed upon him. There was a woman afflicted with hemorrhage for twelve years. She had suffered greatly at the hands of many doctors and had spent all that she had. Yet she was not helped, but only grew worse. She had heard about Jesus and came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak. She said, If I but touch his clothes, I shall be cured. Immediately her flow of blood dried up. She felt in her body that she was healed of her affliction. Jesus, aware at once that power had gone out from him, turned around in the crowd and asked, Who has touched my clothes? But his disciples said to Jesus, You see how the crowd is pressing upon you, and yet you ask, Who touched me? And he looked around to see who had done it. The woman, realizing what had happened to her, approached in fear and trembling. She fell down before Jesus and told him the whole truth. He said to her, Daughter, your faith has saved you. Go in peace and be cured of your affliction. While he was still speaking, people from the synagogue official's house arrived and said, Your daughter has died. Why trouble the teacher any longer? Disregarding the message that was reported, Jesus said to the synagogue official, Do not be afraid, just have faith. He did not allow anyone to accompany him inside except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. When they arrived at the house of the synagogue official, he caught sight of a commotion, people weeping and wailing loudly. So he went in and said to them, why this commotion and weeping? The child is not dead, but asleep. And they ridiculed him. Then he put them all out. He took along the child's father and mother and those who were with him and entered the room where the child was. He took the child by the hand and said to her, Thalita kum, which means, little girl, I say to you, arise. The girl, a child of twelve, arose immediately and walked around. At that they were utterly astounded. He gave strict orders that no one should know this and said that she should be given something to eat. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. It often happens that we have in mind to do something that we consider important, and as we go about trying to do it, we are interrupted in some way. Perhaps someone unexpectedly crosses our path and holds us up, and we get delayed. We can find ourselves getting annoyed, annoyed by the interruption. We wait patiently or not so patiently so for the person to move on so that we can get back to doing what we think is more important. Yet we have come to appreciate more fully that every encounter is in some way providential, including those that 
interrupt what we are intent on doing. The one who unexpectedly crosses our path can be the person with whom the Lord is inviting us to engage, rather than seeing the encounter as an interruption to something more important. It is often better to see it as the greatest moment. What we set out to do may not be what is most important, rather the call of the present moment may be what really matters, the person who stands before us here and now. We were reminded of that by today's Gospel reading. A prominent member of the community, a synagogue official, Jairus, pleaded with Jesus to come to his daughter, who was desperately sick. Jesus set out with him on this very important journey. Indeed, what could be more important for someone like Jesus than going to the home of a child who is close to death? On the way of the house of Jairus, Jesus had an encounter with a woman we took up precious time. Yet Jesus did not react impatiently to this interruption as we might. Indeed, the contrary was the case. The woman with the flow of blood simply wanted to touch the clothing of Jesus. She didn't care to approach him personally as Jairus had done. It was Jesus who ensured that the fleeting encounter that the woman was working for became, in reality, a truly personal, personal encounter between two human beings. When Jesus noticed that someone had drawn on his healing power, he stopped, turned around in the crowd and asked, who has touched my clothes? In spite of the urgency of the journey on which he had set out, he wanted to meet this person who had reached out to him in such trust and faith. Eventually, the woman came forward, fear and trembling, not, known, not knowing what to expect. There was no need for her to be anxious. Jesus addressed her in very tender terms. Daughter, he said, your faith has saved you. The woman wanted a fitting encounter with Jesus. He wanted, to, he wanted a truly personal encounter in which he could affirm her, her courageous faith. This was the call and the task of the moment for Jesus. Some people would have seen this encounter as an unfortunate interruption. Jairus himself must have been anxiously waiting for Jesus to continue journeying with him. Indeed, while Jesus was still taking, talking with a woman, word came through that Jairus' daughter has died had died. Jesus had delayed too long, it seemed. Yet, Jesus knew that meeting this woman was the call of the present moment. He also understood that whenever we respond to the call of the moment, everyone benefits, even those who seem initially to lose out. The woman displayed the kind of faith that Jairus now needed to have in the face of his daughter's death. As Jesus says to him, do not be afraid, just have faith. Jesus' engagement with this woman in need means that Jairus and his family could now experience Jesus not just as one could heal could heal the sick, but 
who could bring new life out of the death. Jesus not only healed the very sick girl as he was asked to do, but brought her from death to new life. We believe that this is what Jesus can ultimately do for all of us. The Gospel reading encourages us to pay attention to the interruptions in life. What seems like distraction can be where the call of the Lord is to be found. When our plans do not work out as we wanted because of some unexpected turn of events, it may not be the misfortune that we think it is at the time. Sometimes, when our plans do not work out, it can create a space for the Lord to work in a way that we could never have planned for. In the story we have just heard, Jesus gave himself over to the interruption. He attended fully to a woman whose condition would have left her socially and religiously marginalized. He knew this was the call of the present moment for God. In answering that call, he was doing God's work in the task he initially set out to accomplish did not suffer. Jairus had his daughter restored to him. There are times in life when we need to embrace the interruption rather than just driving on towards the goal we have set for ourselves. We can sometimes misjudge where the real work lies. The interruption can be the work the Lord wants us to engage in. The unexpected twists and turns of life's journey can be the real moments of grace. What happens on that way can be as important as what happens when we arrive.